So I need to make some modifications to this little voltage uh, alarm unit, uh, but I thought I'd just do another check on these. I bought five online as a loss of five, and I found a bit of variation in the measuring. Uh, just taking a look on the spec on the back here, it does say the voltage detection precision, 0 0.01 volts. Yeah, no, I, I don't think it's uh, 0 0.01 volts. I think it's probably more like 0 0.1, 10 times as much as that. Anyway, um, I'll just further demonstrate that. I think it was a bit clumsily done when I first did it with the battery, so I'll just do it again here. As I say, I've gone through all five, and I've actually picked this is the uh, this is the best one. So twenty three and a half volts, three ninety one, three ninety four. 388, 394, 385, 390. Okay, so between 385 and 394, going to just spread around about a tenth of a volt there. I just rejig this up to make this easy to get the probes on. So I start from this side, 394. 394, 392, 392, 394, 393. So yeah, look, they're, they're much closer within two one-hundredths of a volt. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to have to take this sort of beeper with a bit of a pinch of salt and just add a sort of fudge factor or a comfort factor of about 0.1, possibly 0.2 of a volt. So I might set the uh, cutout rather than setting it at 3 volts, I might set it actually for something like 3.2 volts possibly. Anyway, the modifications that I need to make are fairly straightforward. But to get this to be projecting through the casing you can see that these two uh, sounder units here are going to be sort of in the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the sleeve and I'm going to whip these two out and hopefully just turn them around and put them on the back of the board so that the unit can go inside the casing like this and this can project nicely through the, uh, through the outside. Okay, that cleaned up quite nicely. I've taken all the solder out of the holes, uh, wiped it down with acetone to remove the solder flux. Um, now, so they have to go on the back here. I've popped a bit of yellow insulation tape. There's just a few components. It looks like the transistors that actually drive these little pizza speaker things, buzzers. Um, so I just did that to ensure they don't short out with any of these pins. There's not much protection on the back of these buzzers. Anyway, let's see how we can get this back together. These are polarised, so positive is the bottom connection, negative is the top. I think I'll do these just one by one. Canted back a little bit at a weird angle, but that shouldn't really matter. Let's just test it out. Okay. So that's still working. Now to put it inside the case.
Okay, so the case of this mega torch, as you've seen before in my earlier videos and the testing, I've had the heatsink mounted in this uh, plastic joining piece. Very little modification required to this at all. We've got the four holes which allow the heatsink uh, to be mounted and stop the LED uh, running backwards and forwards. And then there are four holes which allow the front and the back piece to be held together. I'm just using uh, self-tapping screws through here. Moving quickly on to the main body, a number of slots and holes and everything, and, and you'll see it as it comes together, but I'll go through it very uh, briefly here. I've got four slots here, again, to accommodate the legs of the heatsink. I wanted the sleeve to go in far enough, and they were just binding, so I've just cut those out. Some of them are a little bit larger than others, because in fact they are larger on the actual heatsink itself and there's some wires I think around this one here. On the top we've got some holes which are going to accommodate these brackets. These brackets are going to act as feet as well. On the top um, we have two holes for a handle and the handle is, is like this. Off to the side we have the on-off switch and we have a hole for the potentiometer. This other hole was a mistake, so we'll pretend it's not there. Down the back end we've got the cutout for the voltage tester buzzer thing. So that slips in there. Next door to it this large hole is going to be for a momentary push button. I want to have that uh, voltage tester on all the time. And underneath and round the back, well, I've used the back end of a, a fan again from a computer, and this is going to simply s slot in here um, to protect the back of the battery. So yeah, that's about it. I thought I'd just show it to you before I get it all sprayed up. I've decided to spray this pipe black on the outside, a matte black. Um, I've decided not to do the inside, just leave that raw. Uh, again, I'm going to leave it raw on the inside where the LED, because I guess that's probably better if it reflects the light rather than, uh, rather than a solid black colour. Anyway, so I'll get those sprayed up and then we'll get it assembled. Okay, before I finally get this packaged up, because everything's ready to go, I just thought I'd give you a visual on the wiring, and I'll draw a diagram in a minute, but uh, just show you practically how things work first. We've got the battery here, we've got the LED here, we've got the varying potentiometer here, a momentary push button, an on-off button, we've also got the low voltage alarm, and we've got the charging lead. I'll just explain what this split lead is for in a, in a minute. So if we're to switch the unit on, the lamp comes on. Also the low voltage alarm comes on, that's permanently on whilst the lamp is on to warn you if the battery is getting too low. However, if the lamp is off, you can just use the momentary button and you can scroll through and uh, see what the voltages on all the individual cells are. Uh, lastly, but uh, by no means least, I have split this lead here, as you can see, we've got three ways. And to be able to do a, a balance charge, and this is quite tight, isn't it? Um, I've just allowed us to be able to swap that over. So this can be then disconnected and then connected into the um, LiPo recharging unit, you know, if you want to do a balance charging. Now, I don't think I'm going to be doing a balance charging every time I charge this. I think you probably do that once every four or five times, maybe. Uh, I'm not too sure. I guess it really depends on how out of balance they become. Keep an eye on it to start off with, but yeah, I don't think you need to do a balance charge every time. So if I'm just to draw this out diagrammatically for you, and my apologies here, I'm, I'm not going to use any international standard symbols or anything, and it's going to be half schematic, half layout, really. Um, so if I was to put this with the battery where it will be, pretty much in the uh, centre. And if we say we've got the 
positive and the negative. I'm actually going to draw it the other way around actually um, with, with the LED on this side. So if we've got the LED at the front of the torch. And that obviously is powered off the DC to DC. And we need to power that. And that is also in parallel powering the other DC, which is powering the fan. At the back end of the battery, we have the six-way balance lead. As I say, I've actually split this uh, negative side. So this is again positive. This is the most negative lead. We have a push button. And at the front, we have the what is in fact a double pole single throw switch and the positive is connected all the way through straight to the DC to DC converter and that's that's a permanent link the negative is the one that is broken and that is simply broken like so so when we close this current um, can flow through to the DC to DC converter and back to the battery, that's fine. Need to make sure that we can now power this low voltage indicator. So what we've done, what I've done rather, is to loop across the back of this double pole switch. And then this switch here simply sits across that one. And then we connect this simply into there. So pressing the button here allows the uh, negative line to be made across through to the actual um, low voltage uh, detector momentarily. All the other lines are permanently connected. Okay, hopefully that's straightforward. I might do a better diagram than that, but I thought I'd just do that on the video.